Welcome to Amazing Dinosaurs. This is a collection of Jurassic World Raptors versus Fortnite. Let's start with the first Fortnite character, the Black Knight figure. And here it is. I think it stands around a foot tall and it looks like it has, I think, just two different colors on it. The all black and then the red detailing. And it looks like you can move the head up and down and back and forth a little bit, although it's not super movable. And you can move the arms. I think you can even twist the wrists as well. Yep, that's right. And of course you can move the legs up and down as well. So it is decently poseable. It's a bummer you can't twist the torso though. But overall, it's a pretty cool figure and it's quite inexpensive as well. And now let's meet the first Raptor to face off against the Black Knight. This is my super colossal Endoraptor figure. It is one of my newest super colossal figures. It's got the classic black with gold striping coloring and I absolutely love the design of these teeth. So then let's face this Endoraptor off versus the Black Knight. And first off, there's obviously a huge height difference. This figure is, uh, like I said, around a foot high, which is pretty tall, but the super colossal figure is way taller, probably double when you stand it up all the way. I do like that they kind of have the same color going on, both with a lot of black coloring, but this one has the gold detailing and this one has the red detailing. And it's always fun to find out the weight difference between the two, so let's see how heavy this figure is. Uh, it's decently heavy for its size, but obviously this figure is gonna be way heavier because it's like five times the size of the Black Knight. So now it's time to comment. Who do you think would win in a battle? The Super Colossal Endoraptor or the Black Knight? Our next Jurassic World Raptor to face off is this older figure. This one is actually from Jurassic Park, and I believe it is a Utah Raptor. And like many of the old Jurassic Park figures, it actually has the real feel skin, so it's a soft rubber instead of a hard plastic. And it's quite large compared to many of the Raptor figures that Jurassic World is releasing today. And it's got a pretty cool special feature. There's a button underneath its tail here that when you press, it swings its head down for a chomping action. So let's face off this raptor against the mighty Black Knight Fortnite character. And it's a little hard to get this raptor to stand up, but from the looks of it, it looks like the Black Knight is now the taller figure, probably just by only an inch or two. And both figures still have some black coloring, although the raptor now has predominantly this tan color. Now in terms of weight, let's see which one is heavier. The Utah Raptor is pretty heavy. And now let's check out the Black Knight. This one is definitely a lot more lightweight. There must be some sort of like batteries or mechanics in this dinosaur to make it a little bit heavier. So who do you think would win in a battle? The Black Knight or the Utah Raptor? Next up on the Raptor side, we've got a pretty unique one. This is the Primal Pal Velociraptor Blue from the Dino Rivals series. So it definitely looks a bit different compared to most Velociraptor Blue figures. Got the larger head and the smaller body. But this figure is really cool because of how you can move it around in really lifelike ways. It can sway from side to side and it even has a snapping action when you press down on the body. This might be one of my more favorite Velociraptor blue figures, but let's face it off against the Black Knight. Now we can see a huge height difference. The Velociraptor blue figure is quite a bit smaller than the Black Knight here. And now in terms of weight difference, let's see this Velociraptor blue is pretty heavy. It's got batteries and a bunch of stuff in it that allows it to make these movements as well as the sound effects. Whereas the Black Knight over here doesn't have any sound effects or anything like that, so it's pretty lightweight. So the Velociraptor figure is definitely heavier despite being half of the size of the Black Knight. So who do you think would win in a battle? The smaller Velociraptor blue figure or the Fortnite Black Knight? The next raptor that we're checking out is this Mega Raptor figure from the Roar Strikers series. This was released as part of the Jurassic World Dominion movie, and it looks pretty similar to other raptors, although it has some pretty distinct differences. First off, it's got quite a bit more feathering than many of the other raptor figures that I have. There's even a bunch of feathers right on its tail, too. The Mega Raptor also has much larger claws on its front hands, and of course, different coloring as well, with the red in the back and the dark blue in the front. Plus, it's got a a cool chomping action when you press down on its body. Now let's face this raptor off against the Fortnite figure, but we've got a new one, so let's check this one out first. 
So let's take a look at this figure. First off, it's got the removable helmet, which is pretty cool. I love that you can remove that and see the head that's underneath. So let's go ahead and put that back on. And it's got a pretty cool suit, pretty good coloring. You can see that there's the fins on his hands. And you can see that there's even some fins on the sides of his legs right here. And then of course, he's got the yellow flippers on his feet. So let's go ahead and put this right next to the Mega Raptor and let's face them off. Now the Shark Senior figure is I think the exact same height as the Black Knight figure and it's quite a bit taller than the Mega Raptor figure here. I'd say they're both on par in terms of the detail with their coloring and their texturing although the Mega Raptor has a bit more intricate texturing with its skin. And in terms of weight, let's see which one is heavier. The Mega Raptor has some batteries in it for those sound effects, so this one's decently heavy. And now let's check out the weight of the Shark Senior figure. Just like the Black Knight, this figure doesn't have any batteries or special features, so it's pretty lightweight. But between the two of these, I'd say that they're really close. The Shark Senior figure might be a little bit heavier. Now then, who do you think would win in a battle? Shark Senior from Fortnite? or the Mega Raptor. Next up for the Jurassic World Raptors, I've got another Endoraptor, a whole lot smaller than the original Super Colossal one that I showed you. And this one's quite a bit older as well. This one is from the Fallen Kingdom era of Jurassic World, whereas they released this one, I think earlier this year or late last year. And although this figure is a lot smaller, it is a whole lot more poseable. You can see all the joints and points of articulation on this figure. Even the tail has two different points of articulation. And the coloring is right on par with the Super Colossal version over there as well. Now let's face it off against the Fortnite figure. And you can see that I stood the Endoraptor figure all the way up as tall as it could get to compare the height and there's still quite a bit of a height difference. Chomp Senior over here is still the taller figure by quite a bit. Now let's check out the weight difference. We'll check out Chomp Senior first, and now the Endoraptor. I suspect they'll be pretty similar in weight. Uh, you know what, the Endoraptor is actually heavier, even though it is smaller. That's pretty surprising, but I suspect that the Endoraptor figure has a lot more solid plastic in it. So now that these two are side by side, who do you think would win in a battle? Chomp Senior or the Fallen Kingdom Endoraptor? This next figure here is the Pyroraptor Dinosaur. And this figure was released as part of Jurassic World Dominion. It has a ton of feather texturing all over its body. It's around a medium sized figure and it doesn't really have any special features other than being able to move the arms, the legs, and the tail. But it is quite a bit less expensive than many of the other figures we've seen so far. So it kind of makes sense. So let's face it off. Chomp Senior from Fortnite against the Pyroraptor. Once again, Chomp Senior is the taller figure, probably twice the height of the Pyroraptor. And now in terms of weight, let's see, Chomp Senior still pretty lightweight, some light plastic, and the Pyroraptor just around the same weight, actually. So it's pretty interesting, once again, despite the size difference, their weights are actually very similar. So it's time for the question, who would win in a battle, Chomp Senior or the Pyroraptor? Now here is another pretty vintage raptor figure. This Velociraptor figure was made for the first Jurassic World movie, back when Hasbro was making the figures instead of Mattel, as they are nowadays. And even comparing them to some of these newer figures by Mattel here, you can see that there's quite a bit of design differences. Like on this figure, the mouth is stuck in an open roaring position, so you can't open or close that. And you can still move the arms and the legs on this figure, but these older figures are notorious for not being able to stand up properly. Nevertheless, let's face it off against our Fortnite figure. And it looks like we've got a new one, so let's go ahead and check this one out. This is the Master Grade Midas Rex figure, and it comes with all of the full armor. For this first dinosaur, let's only grab the Midas Rex figurine itself. Now this figure is way more detailed and articulate than the other Fortnite figures we've seen in this video. Even though it is a whole lot smaller, 
it is a lot more detailed. You can even remove the guns on his side. And you can take those weapons and even put it in his hand. So they're usable. And check that out. You can even move his torso side to side and up and down as well as his head his arms, elbows, legs, knees, ankles. This is a pretty cool figure. So let's place Midas Rex right next to the Raptor he's facing off against. And now look at that size difference. This Fortnite figure is super small compared to the Raptor figure. It's probably twice the height of Midas Rex. And I think this one definitely wins in terms of detailing and design compared to this older Jurassic World figure. And I bet you can figure in terms of weight, this figure is probably pretty lightweight compared to the raptor figure although not a whole lot lighter than the raptor figure so then comment below who do you think would win midas rex or the velociraptor <laughs> Now here is our second Velociraptor blue figure of this face-off. This figure's shape and size is quite a bit different compared to the Velociraptor blue that we saw earlier, but it still has the same coloring. And this is a basic edition of Velociraptor blue, so you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail, but there are no special features or anything like that. So let's face this Velociraptor against Midas Rex. Now Midas Rex is a whole lot smaller than the Velociraptor blue figure, and this one might be larger, but it definitely has less points of articulation articulation than the Midas Rex figure has. His movements can be super realistic and is great for posing. And in terms of weight, I bet the Midas Rex figure is a whole lot lighter, so let's check that out. Yep, of course the Raptor figure is larger. But who do you think would win? Velociraptor Blue or Midas Rex? For the next raptor figure, this one's a bit more different. This is the only Amber Collection raptor that I have that I've shown you so far. This is the Velociraptor Delta figure. It's got some of my favorite coloring and design for the Velociraptor figures. And since it's in the Amber Collection, it is super poseable. It has many points of articulation. So let's bring it over here to face off against Midas Rex. And once again, the Midas Rex figure is a whole lot smaller than the Velociraptor. And I think their special abilities and features are on par with each other because they both have a ton of different points of articulation and overall just have really good design and coloring. And in terms of the weight, of course, let's see the Velociraptor is pretty heavy and then Midas Rex here is probably half the weight of the Velociraptor. But before we actually face these off, let's go ahead and get Midas Rex in his armor. So we've got to take all these pieces and reassemble Midas Rex to be in the armor configuration. Let's get started. Well, that was a bit of a process, but here is Midas Rex in his full armor suit, complete with the dual Kingmaker's harvesting tools. So now let's go ahead and face Midas Rex versus the Amber Collection Velociraptor. Now with the full armor plating, who do you think would win in the battle? Midas Rex or Velociraptor Delta? <laughs> Here is our final raptor of this versus collection. This Velociraptor figure is the smallest out of all the raptors we've seen so far, and it came as a set with a Dr. Ian Malcolm figure. Now this Velociraptor is pretty cool. It's got different coloring compared to many other Velociraptor figures. It's got this pretty cool green speckled design along the top of its back, and its head is actually adjustable, which is unusual for Velociraptor figures this size. So now it's time for the final face-off of Raptors versus Fortnite. We've got Midas Rex in his full armoring on the left side here, and the Velociraptor on the right side. Now in terms of coloring and design, I think they're pretty equal, although Midas Rex Rex here has a ton more accessories. In terms of size, it looks like the Velociraptor figure is a little bit taller, but not too much. And then in terms of weight, let's see, Midas Rex with his armoring, and then the Velociraptor figure. You know what, they're, I think, almost identical in weight. And interestingly, these figures look around the same height comparatively as they would be in the movies. So this Raptor is just the size that a Raptor would be in one of the movies. So who do you think would win, Midas Rex or the Velociraptor? Now then, here is the entire collection, my Raptors 
versus the Fortnite figures. Which of these Raptor figures is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. And let me know which of these three Fortnite figures is your favorite. Was it the Black Knight, Chomp Senior, or Midas Rex? Let's first start by checking out the Mario figure that will be facing off against the Predators. This is the official Super Mario, it's a me, Mario. And here he is, it's quite a large figure, and this one has some pretty cool features to it. First off, his overalls are actual real fabric. You can see here that I can move it around, and that's really cool, that definitely gives it a whole added dimension. And the rest of the figure is a hard plastic, but it is surprisingly adjustable. You can move the arms in all directions, as well as the legs, you can even bend the knee joint as well. And then you can swivel the head side to side as well. And the coolest part is that this comes with a variety of action features and sound effects. The first special feature is when you press Mario's hand, it comes with some sound effects. So with his right hand, it has the coin collecting sound effect as well as his voice. And with his left hand, let's see what that sounds like. So he's got a punching sound effect on this side. And there's also sound effects in his shoes when he kicks something. It's got that little sound and then his voice, of course. And then the final sound effect button is on his hat. When you press it, he's got more voice sound effects and music. Now it's time to check out the first predator in this collection, and this is the super colossal Endoraptor figure. This is one of the newest super colossal figures that Jurassic World has released. It's got the iconic gold stripe running down the side and the black body. And my favorite part are these teeth right here. I love how they stick out and intertwine with the top row. That's so cool. Plus, like all of the other super colossal figures, this Endoraptor has a stomach compartment so you can actually feed it smaller dinosaurs through its mouth down to its stomach. So now it is time to face them off. Mario versus the super colossal Endoraptor. Now right off the bat here, you can see there is a huge size difference between the two. The super colossal Endoraptor is by far the largest. Now Mario has some cool sound effects and buttons and the Endoraptor has some really great texturing as well as that ability to eat smaller dinosaurs. So who do you think would win in a fight? The Endoraptor or Mario? Our next predator to face off against Mario is this huge Tyrannosaurus Rex. This T-Rex figure is from the Jurassic World Dominion movie, and it comes in this dark brown coloring with the black detailing on the top of its back and elsewhere. It's got the bright yellow eyes, and it has an action on its tail to swing the torso back and forth and to chomp the jaw. Check out how big that chomp is. Plus, it looks like there's actually some room in there to fit smaller dinosaurs if it wants to eat some. And now it's time for the T-Rex to face off against Mario. These two figures are a whole lot closer inside, although I think the T-Rex still wins the prize for being taller. And in terms of weight, let's see which one's heavier. This T-Rex actually isn't that heavy, and Mario here, I think, is a bit heavier. So this one's taller, but Mario is the heavier figure. Now then, who do you think would win in a fight? This T-Rex figure or the Mario figure? The next predator to face off is this super special Spinosaurus figure. This Spinosaurus figure is pretty rare. It's in the blue coloring with the yellow detailing on its spine, on its legs, and on its face too. It has a button on the top of its head for the chomping action. But the main reason why this is so special is because of this hidden battle damage on the side that you can open up and reveal its insides. You can actually even lower the ribs as well. And then there's a hidden button over here to make the stomach swirl back and forth. And look at that, there's even some liquid inside of it. So now let's face it off against the one and only Mario. Now with the Spinosaurus standing up all the way, it looks like it's a little bit taller than the Mario figure, or just about the same if you lower it down a little bit. And they've both got their special features here. The Spinosaurus with the massive battle damage on the side, and Mario with his tons of sound effects, like his fists, his feet, and then the button on the top of his head too. And there's also the question of which one is heavier. Let's first check out Mario here. Pretty heavy, 
and then the Spinosaurus. Actually, they're probably right around the same weight, so even though the Spinosaurus is taller, they're the same weight. Now, who do you think would win, Mario or the Spinosaurus? For our next predator, we've got the mighty Giganotosaurus dinosaur. This figure is from the Jurassic World Dominion movie, and I'm sure you remember the awesome battle it had against the T-Rex and the Therizinosaurus in the movie. Now this figure is pretty cool, it's got the green body with the black detailing, it's got the huge spine running along its back, it's got a swivel tail here, which is pretty unusual for figures of this size, and it has two action buttons on its body, there's a hidden action button right here that activates this huge swinging chomping action it's got some sound effects too and then there's actually a hidden action button underneath its tail here for a smaller chomping action a pretty cool roaring too so now let's face it off against Mario and now it looks like Mario is the taller figure of the two the Giganotosaurus is maybe three or four inches smaller than Mario. And since Mario is now the larger figure, I would bet that he's the heavier figure. Let's see here, there's Mario. Now let's lift up the Giganotosaurus. You know, it's pretty close, but I think Mario is the heavier figure now. Now the Giganotosaurus is a very fierce predator, but Mario is no easy fight. Who do you think would win, the Giganotosaurus or Mario? Our next predator is a massive pyroraptor figure. This, I believe, is the largest pyroraptor I have in my entire collection. It's got some really cool feather texturing all over its body, especially along the back of its face, on its back, and on its tail. It's got some huge marbled eyes as well. And this figure is pretty special because it is actually battery operated. So there's a little switch here that I'm gonna turn on and it'll come to life. And you can actually interact with it by pressing right here and check that out. It moves, it chomps, and it has sound effects all on its own. Now let's bring it over to face off against Mario. And this Pyroraptor is already ready to fight. Now this time Mario is quite a bit taller than the dinosaur predator figure here. There's probably a five or six inch difference between Mario and the Pyroraptor figure, but which one is heavier? Let's see, Mario here is decently heavy, and the Pyroraptor here, let's lift it up. Oh, uh, you know what? I think that the Pyroraptor is heavier this time. And that kind of makes sense, because, I mean, look at the size of this thing. There's a lot of plastic on this, and there's motors and batteries in this thing as well. Now, this Pyroraptor figure is one of my favorites because it is battery operated, and you can interact with it. You can get all sorts of chomping actions and stuff. But Mario can do many of the same thing, but just in his own way with the sound effects and with the music. But either way, who do you think would win in a battle? Mario or the Pyroraptor? The next predator dinosaur is the Yangchuanosaurus figure. This predator dinosaur is also from Jurassic World Dominion, specifically from the Massive Action series. It's got the green body with the yellow underbelly and the brown detailing on top with the orange crown on the top of its head, which is one of my favorite things. And it's got some massive actions. First, you can move the tail back and forth to swing the head and torso up and down and back and forth. And there's a button on its tail to chomp the jaw too. Now let's face this predator off against Mario. And now the predator dinosaur is a whole lot smaller than Mario. Both in height, there's probably a four inch difference between the two in terms of which one is taller and in weight. I bet you that Mario is a lot heavier than this Yangtronosaurus. And it certainly is. This dinosaur figure doesn't have any motors or batteries in it, so that's what makes it quite a bit more lightweight, besides the fact that it's a whole lot smaller. So now, who do you think would win in a fight? But before you answer, I've got a bit of a surprise for you. And that is this massive Bowser figure from the Super Mario Bros. movie. I figured it'd be cool to get another figure from the Mario series, so let's open it up.
And here is the Bowser figure. And this figure is pretty cool. It's got 14 different points of articulation, so you can move the arms, the wrists, the legs around in all different directions. He's got some pretty cool coloring too with the yellow, and that fades into the green, and it's got these spikes all over its shell. But the coolest part about this figure is a hidden feature. When you press this spike, he'll actually breathe smoke, which is actually just steam, but let's check it out. Oh, there we go. You can see it a little bit right there. It is pushing out steam, so it looks like he's breathing out fire. That is pretty cool. So now we actually have a three-way face-off. Mario versus Bowser versus the Yangchuanosaurus. Which do you think would win? Next up is another mighty predator. This one is called the Ekrixinatosaurus. This dinosaur figure is from the new Epic Evolution series. So this figure has some different features that you won't see on older figures. Firstly are its teeth. They're now made out of a soft rubber, so they look a bit more realistic than they used to, I think. And instead of an attack button, it has this dial on its back that you spin back and forth for the chomping and sound effects. That's pretty interesting, but I'm not sure which I like better, the buttons or these spinning dials. And now it's time to face off the Ekrixinatosaurus versus Mario. And now there's even a larger size difference between the two. The Ekrixinatosaurus is probably half the size of Mario here. And Bowser over here might be around the same height, but he's definitely a whole lot heavier than the dinosaur figure. So let me know in the comments, who do you think would win? The Ekrixinatosaurus or Mario? The next predator against Mario is another similar looking dinosaur compared to the last one, but this one is called the Scorpio Venator. It's got a light brown coloring over most of its body with a lighter underbelly and some bright orange detailing along its neck and on its face. And this figure is older than the Epic Evolution series, like the last figure we saw, because you can see that the teeth are a hard plastic and they aren't quite as detailed and realistic looking as the other one was. But this figure still has a really cool chomping action when you press down on its body. Check out that full body chomping effect. And now it's time for Predator versus Mario. Once again, Mario towers over this dinosaur figure. It is probably twice the size as the Scorpio Venator dinosaur and a whole lot heavier too, maybe even twice the weight of the Scorpio Venator. This is quite lightweight, although it does have batteries and some speakers in it. Now let me know in the comments, who do you think would win? The Scorpio Venator or Mario? Just a few predators left. This next one is a very different looking one. This super long dinosaur is called the Sarcosuchus. And this one comes in the camo green coloring on the sides and underbelly with the clay red coloring along the top. Check out these rows of spines that go all the way down to its tail. And of course, it's got a huge mouth full of teeth and a very narrow mouth too. Now it's time to face it off against Mario. And first, let's check out that size difference. This Sarcosuchus figure is probably only three or four inches tall. So then Mario is probably four or maybe even five times as tall as this predator dinosaur. And I don't think we even have to compare the weights either. I think Mario is definitely heavier than this much smaller dinosaur figure. Oh, and you know what? I forgot to mention that this Sarcosuchus has an attack feature. You saw it earlier, but there's a button on its tail to move its head around and to jump its jaw. So then, who do you think would win in a match? The Sarcosuchus or Mario? Here is our final predator and our smallest one. This dinosaur is called the Atrociraptor, obviously related to the Velociraptor. It has a dark orange body with some tan striping all over, including its tail, its back, and on its face too. And it's pretty adjustable. You can move the arms, the legs, the neck, and the jaw you can open and close manually. Now this dinosaur looks pretty cool, but sadly doesn't have any attack feature. So let's go ahead and place it up against the Mario. 
Mario figure. And this is the biggest size difference between the Predator and Mario so far. This dinosaur is super small compared to Mario. It probably reaches only the top of Mario's leg, and it might be only like 10% of the weight of the Mario figure. So who do you think would win in a battle? The Atrociraptor figure or the Mario figure? started with our first T-Rex. This is the classic Camp Cretaceous T-Rex and is one of my favorites because of how realistic it looks when you move it. Next, let's grab our first raptor. Let's go with this huge Dino Trackers Endoraptor. This is actually one of the newest and most recent Endoraptor figures that Mattel has released. And there are the first two facing off. Let's get some more. Next up, let's go with the classic Jurassic World Dominion T-Rex figure. This figure is a whole lot darker than the Camp Cretaceous version, and it might actually be a little bit bigger. For our next raptor, why don't we go with this big one right here? I believe that this is Velociraptor Blue, and it actually has some pretty cool action features. You can press down on its body for a chomping action, and you can swivel it side to side as if it's walking. All right, let's set that up right in front of the huge Endoraptor. For our next T-Rex, let's go with the huge Stomp and Escape T-Rex. I think this might actually be from Camp Cretaceous as well. And it's got some pretty cool attack buttons. There's a button on its back for the roaring action. Plus, you can twist the tail for stomp sound effects. Let's see, we've got another big raptor in here. Let's go with this next Endoraptor. This is actually a pretty old figure. This is the Grab and Growl Endoraptor. And it's called that because it has a few features. First, you can use this button to move its arms. There's also a button on the bottom of its tail to chomp the jaw. And you can even use the tail to move the head around too. All right, let's put this one pretty close to the other Endoraptor figure. There, he'll be holding on to this little guy. Back to the T-Rexes. Let's grab this guy and see it is a battle damage T-Rex. Check that out right there on the side with a click of a button. You can reveal the battle damage. Plus, the rest of the body is poseable as well. Now let's set this one down right next to the Camp Cretaceous T-Rex. There they are facing off with the raptors. For our next raptor, we're gonna grab this one at the bottom. This is a Utah raptor from Jurassic Park. So this figure is pretty old and actually has a rubber skin texture as opposed to the hard plastic of all the rest of these. And you can even move the claws on its feet up and down. Let's set this one up right next to the grab and growl endoraptor. <laughs> On to our next T-Rex, we've got a few more huge ones in here. This one, I believe, is from Fallen Kingdom. And this one features a pretty cool chomping action when you move its tail. Check that out just by moving its tail down. And when you move its tail the other way, it actually has a roaring action. Let's see now, let's put this T-Rex right next to the Stomp and Escape. Back to the Raptors, let's grab this little one. This is our first Atrociraptor of this collection. And this is actually a Rowdy Roars Atrociraptor. It is actually battery operated and you can get it to walk around. Plus it has some chomping and roaring sound effects. We're gonna set this one up towards the front because it is a bit shorter than the rest of them. Our next T-Rex is a battle damage T-Rex. You can see that it has some battle damage slashes on its chin and on its neck and on other parts of its body too. So it is a battle damage T-Rex like this one, but this one you can turn on and off and this one is just painted on its body. And so we're gonna put it right next to the other battle damage T-Rex. <laughs> Looks like we've got a few more Endoraptor figures in this collection. This one is from Fallen Kingdom, so it's pretty old, and it doesn't have any action buttons, but its whole body is very poseable. So let's get them posed, and let's set them right next to the Utah Raptor. For our 
our next T-Rex, we've got a pretty wildly colored one. This one was actually custom colored. Plus, I believe this T-Rex is from the first Jurassic World movie, so you might have some trouble finding it now. Next, let's grab this Atrociraptor figure in the classic white with brown striping, just like in the movie. And this is a basic figure, so sadly there's no action buttons, but it still looks really cool. Let's set it down right next to the other Atrociraptor. <laughs> Looks like we got one more big T-Rex here. This T-Rex is also from the first Jurassic World movie, so it is pretty old and probably pretty hard to find. And this version has the tan coloring. It's got some gray detailing along its face and the action button on its back for the jaws. All right, here is our final Endoraptor of the collection, I think. This is the basic version of the Endoraptor, so it's a whole lot less poseable than many of these other figures right here. And it might actually be a little bit smaller. All right, it looks like it is in the sneaking pose. Check out that gold stripe that switches to a darker brown gold right along its tail. And let's set this up right beside these Atrociraptor figures. Now let's grab this T-Rex figure. This is actually a model T-Rex figure, not made by Mattel, but it still looks really ferocious, has some really cool texturing and color detailing too. And since it's a little bit smaller, let's set it up on the front lines right in front of the raptors. Over here, we've got a huge Velociraptor blue figure. And just like this Endoraptor figure that we see right here, this is the basic version of Velociraptor blue. So it's not super poseable, but it still looks great. Let's set this up right behind the basic Endoraptor. We've got some crazy looking T-Rexes in here. This figure's a bit smaller than all the rest of the T-Rexes, but it still has some amazing coloring. Check out that texturing and the fading from the yellow to the green. Let's set this one down right behind the first model T-Rex figure. <laughs> Back to our raptors, we've got another Velociraptor blue figure, but this one is from the Amber collection, so this one is super poseable, and it's even got some glowing gold eyes. That's a really cool feature. So why don't we set this one up right next to the basic Velociraptor blue figure. Look at the differences in the coloring and the texturing compared to the basic version right here. On to our next T-Rex figure. We've got a blue and gold T-Rex figure right here. And it's even got some bright teal coloring right around its eyes too. I think this figure might be the smallest T-Rex yet. So let's set this one up right in front. Let's go ahead and grab these other two Amber Collection Velociraptors. There's first Velociraptor Charlie in the bright green coloring with the striping along the top and a headpiece right behind its face. Let's set this raptor down right in front of the Amber Collection Velociraptor Blue. And then there's Velociraptor Echo in the brown and black coloring with the lighter underbelly. And so let's set this Velociraptor up right in front of the others. Looks like we've got a few small T-Rexes in here. This is an older figure from the first Jurassic World movie. It's got a little battle damage on the side and a tail that controls the mouth. Now this is a little itty bitty T-Rex, so we're gonna put it right up front. And here is our last raptor of this collection. It looks like it's an Atrociraptor in the white with brown striping, just like this basic version right here. And so we're gonna set it up right in front, really close to the other T-Rex. And here is our final dinosaur. This is a green T-Rex from the first Jurassic World movie. Just like the other miniature T-Rex that we see right here, it's got the battle damage on the side and you can use the tail to open and close the mouth as well as move the neck. So let's set this down right in front next to the other T-Rex. But wait, I've actually got a surprise for you. I've actually bought some new stuff to show in this collection. This first one is a custom colored T-Rex that I just ordered off of eBay. This is my first time seeing it and I love the attention to detail with the coloring. It really looks lifelike. Plus, it looks like there's a whole lot more battle damage than there normally was on this figure. That is really cool. And look at that, there's even some more battle damage on the other side. All right, that is super cool. I definitely wanna be getting more custom painted T-Rexes. And let's not forget for the Raptor side, I just bought an uncaged Rowdy Roars Velociraptor beta figure. Now let's power it up and check it out. Just like the Rowdy Roar figure back there, there's a button at the top of the head. You get some chomping and sound effects. And you can also touch it underneath its chin to make it walk. Let's 
first start by unboxing the Steve figurine. And here it is. Steve is wearing the blue pants with a teal colored shirt. And overall, it's a pretty cool figure. You can move the arms up and down. You can move the legs back and forth. You can move the head side to side and even up and down a little bit. And this Steve figure actually has hands. So you can remove this and then there's a spot to put in some tools. Plus, Steve came with these other accessories that we will check out in a little bit. But first, let's meet our first T-Rex to face off against Steve. This is the super colossal Tyrannosaurus Rex in the custom painting. This is one of my most unique T-Rexes in the collection because it has this fiery styled paint job all over it. Plus this super colossal figure actually has a stomach compartment all the way down here so you can actually feed it smaller dinosaurs and it'll be stored in its stomach here. Now then, let's go ahead and face this off against Minecraft Steve. All right, look at that size difference. Steve is way over here. It's a tiny little figurine. I bet he could even fit inside of the T-Rex's mouth. And it's interesting, they both got different color combos going on. Steve is in a more blue and cool colors, whereas the T-Rex is in fiery red tone. The next T-Rex to face off is another custom colored Tyrannosaurus Rex, but this one is in a camouflage green coloring. I think this coloring is way better than the original painting, especially around the face here. Check out those teeth and all the shading around its eyes and the rest of its face. So now let's face this T-Rex off against Minecraft Steve. And as you can see, there's still a huge size difference between the two, although this one is a bit more closer in size than the super colossal one. And this T-Rex actually has a really cool chomping ability that chomps downwards. I don't think you or I or Steve would wanna be in the way of those chompers. next T-Rex is another green T-Rex, but this is actually the original painting. This is the Legacy Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. It has a darker green body with some gray and tan detailing along the top of its back, and it has a button at the top of its head for the chomping action. And now let's face that off against Steve. And the T-Rex is still quite a bit larger. You can see that it stands way over Steve's head still, although they're getting closer in size now. What do you think? Would Steve stand a chance in a fight against a T-Rex like this? I think we gotta give Steve some tools, which we'll give him in the next round. I think this next T-Rex is a little bit larger. This is the new 93 Real Field Jurassic Park Tyrannosaurus Rex. And it's called the Real Field T-Rex because its skin is actually a soft rubber, unlike most of the figures nowadays, like these ones over here that are hard plastic. Plus, this T-Rex has a stomach compartment as well. So just like the super colossal T-Rex, you can feed this smaller one small dinosaurs. And finally, it's got some sound effects as well. Now it's time to face off against Steve. And yeah, this T-Rex is a whole lot larger than that green one over there was. And just like the super colossal T-Rex, we've got two different styles of coloring. We've got the cool blue coloring over here with Steve and the fiery red coloring over here. Although this one looks a lot more realistic than the custom colored painting over here. Let me know in the comments below, who do you think would win in this fight? But before you comment, I'm going to give Steve a tool here now. And that tool is his mighty sword. And this thing is actually made of metal. So this is actually quite heavy. Whereas the actual Steve figurine over here, I think is entirely made out of plastic. So now let's go ahead and give him the sword. And now Steve is ready to face off with the T-Rex. Comment below, who do you think would win in a battle? The next T-Rex is a very unique one. This is actually a deconstructed Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now this T-Rex is made so that you can actually see the insides of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. You can see some intestines there, there's a bunch of bones, and you can actually lift off the ribs right here to reveal what I think is the stomach underneath. That's pretty crazy looking. So now it is time to face off against Steve. And since this T-Rex can't even stand up, Steve is actually the taller one in this competition. And in fact, it actually looks like Steve already defeated this T-Rex because the T-Rex is already taken apart and totally destroyed. All right, way to go, Steve. Ah! 
Next up is another orange brown T-Rex here. Pretty similar to the deconstructed T-Rex that we saw right here. But obviously this one still has all of its limbs. Although you can see quite a bit of battle damage on its tail, on its leg on its side, and even on its face. So this T-Rex figure is in much better shape than the last. So now it's time for the face-off. Now, once again, Steve is way shorter than the T-Rex here. And he's got a sword, but that might not do it. Let's go ahead and add his final accessory, which is this armor plating here. And these are actual real metal. So let's go ahead and add them on. All right, now Steve is armored up and ready for anything. And I gotta say, with all this actual real metal armor plating, Steve is a lot heavier than he was originally. It's pretty cool that they actually used metal for the armoring. And now, who do you think would win in this competition? Steve or the Tyrannosaurus Rex? The next T-Rex is the smallest T-Rex that we've seen yet in this collection. This is a juvenile T-Rex and it is actually from Jurassic Park. You can see the tattoo on its leg right there. So this figure is quite old. And like many of the old Jurassic Park figures, it has the real feel skin. So it's a soft rubbery skin instead of hard plastic. And it's got a big old battle damage right on its side right there, which is pretty cool. Now it's time to face off the juvenile T-Rex versus Minecraft Steve. But wait, I've actually got a little surprise for you. And that is, I actually bought another set from Minecraft. This is the wolf set from the Diamond Level series. And here is the wolf figurine. It's a bit smaller than Minecraft Steve, but it's still quite poseable. You can see that you can move its torso up and down. You can move its tail and each of its legs individually, as well as its head. Plus, it came with these four accessories. First is this extra head that has different eye shapes compared to the original one right here. It also comes with this collar that you can put on the wolf as well as this piece of meat right here and a bone. So let's go ahead and set the wolf right next to Steve. And here we are with our face off. Who do you think would win? Steve and the wolf or the juvenile T-Rex? <laughs> T-Rex here is a similar size as the last, although it's very different in its coloring. And it should be noted that this is actually a model Tyrannosaurus Rex. So it is a hard plastic all over and it does not move at all. It is stuck in this roaring pose, but it's still pretty cool. It's got some pretty decent coloring. It's got the yellow eyes and then tons of shading along its body as well. So let's face it off against Minecraft Steve. Oh, look at that. They're almost the same in height. The T-Rex is a little bit taller still. And this T-Rex sure looks fierce but Steve is fully armored up with his sword and with his wolf companion. So comment below, who do you think would win? The T-Rex or Steve and the wolf? Here is one of our final T-Rexes. This one has some cool orange brown coloring with the black stripes all along its back and on its legs. And like the last figure, this is a model figure. So there are no joints or arms or jaws that move on this figure, but it does have some pretty sizable teeth. And now let's face off against Minecraft Steve. And look at that, Steve is finally taller than one of the T-Rexes here. And not only that, but I think Steve is actually heavier than the T-Rex figure here as well. So now that the sizes are a lot more even, who do you think would win? Comment below. Oh! And now here is our final T-Rex and by far the smallest one. This one is from Jurassic World and it looks like it's mostly brown in color, but it does have this reflective gold coloring all over its body. Plus, despite how small it is, you can still open and close the mouth. That is pretty cool. Now let's face it off against Minecraft Steve and look at that size difference. Steve is probably three times the size of this Tyrannosaurus Rex and even the wolf is larger than the T-Rex. It's at least maybe like twice the size of this teeny tiny T-Rex. Now this does not look like a fair fight at all.
First up is one of the figures I'm most proud of. This is a custom colored Atrociraptor, and I painted this myself. Went with the yellow and orange sides and the brown striped top. And I put in those red eyes too. I'm super proud of this. Next up, we've got the Tiger Velociraptor from the Amber Collection. This is a larger Velociraptor compared to a lot of the Raptor figures in here. And of course, it's got that orange striped back and super poseable body. Here is a huge Pyroraptor figure. This is the basic edition from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got feathers all over its body, even on its tail. And it's got a cool looking crown on the top of its head made of feathers as well. This is a Mega Raptor from Jurassic World Dominion. So this is quite a new figure as well. It's got the red and dark blue body and the lighter detailing on the top of its head. Plus, when you press down on its back, it has a chomping action with sound effects. Here is Velociraptor Echo from the Amber Collection. Once again, a larger Velociraptor figure compared to normal, super poseable, and it's got some awesome coloring and detailing all over its body. Here is an older Velociraptor figure. It's still Jurassic World, not Jurassic Park, but it's quite old. I think it might've come out during the first movie. It's got the tan body with the green striping on top, and it's pretty limited with what you can do and what you can move around. So they've definitely come a long way. Back here is another super old Jurassic World Velociraptor figure. Once again, pretty large. And this one actually has an action that when you press down on its tail, it swings its arms back and forth. Plus it has a battle damage button right there. I don't think it works anymore, but normally it would light up and it would have sound effects as well. Now here is a really old Velociraptor figure. This is from Jurassic Park. It's got this orange striped body and this one used to have an action that when you pressed on its leg, it would move its neck forward, but it's really old so it doesn't work anymore. Check it out, we've got another Pyroraptor figure. This one is a lot smaller. It's still got the same coloring with the black on its body and the red. And this one actually has an extreme battle damage feature on its side that you can turn on and off. Here's a huge Atrociraptor figure. This one is the light color with the brown striping, actually the same color as this super colossal figure that you see over in the corner. And of course, it's got those super cool looking red eyes. Next up, we've got the Velociraptor blue figure from the Amber Collection. This figure is super poseable. It has the iconic coloring for Velociraptor blue, and it actually has a bendable tail. It's like slightly rubber, but you can actually pose it and bend it in different ways, which is pretty cool. Here is a smaller Velociraptor figure. This is from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got the light body with the dark blue coloring on top, and it has an extreme battle damage feature on its side that you can turn on and off. Here's another Pyroraptor figure. This one is super poseable. You can move its neck in all directions, you can move its legs, and you can even twist its tail as well. It's a bit darker colored than the other Pyroraptor figures that I have. This is Velociraptor Charlie from the Amber Collection. It's got the bright green body with stripes, the gray underbelly, and a headpiece right on top of its head. Here is another vintage Velociraptor figure. This might be one of the oldest Velociraptor figures that I have. Check it out. It's got the three tones of color and the yellow eyes too. Back here, we've got some basic Velociraptor figures. These both are identical. They are the orange and brown with the yellow eyes. You can't open the jaws, but you can move the arms, the legs, and the tails. And I've also got another basic figure back here that is Velociraptor Blue. And this figure also has the same features. You can move the arms, the legs, and the tail, but you can't open the jaw or move the neck or anything like that. Back here, we've got some more super old Jurassic World figures. I think these might be from the first or the second movie. This first one is brown with gray striping and is pretty limited with the movements. You can't even open and close the mouth. And there's also this old Jurassic World Velociraptor with the same limited movements. And it looks like it's stuck in a roaring pose or something like that. 
Down here, it looks like we've got some super bright Velociraptor figures. These are all pretty brightly colored and differently colored. I've got a teal green Velociraptor with these spring-loaded legs, so you can actually launch it into the air. Same with this one, is actually spring-loaded as well, but it is super bright red and bright green. And finally, there's this slightly more muted green Velociraptor, but it has an action button on its back that you can use to move its arms. Next, I think this is my final Amber Collection Velociraptor. This is Velociraptor Delta with the teal blue coloring with all the darker specks along its body and is super poseable, just like the other Amber Collection figures. I've got another older Jurassic World Velociraptor here with the brown and gray striping. And just like the other older figures, it's pretty limited in its movements. So it's stuck with its mouth open like that. These are Atrociraptor figures. I've got a tan and brown one that is in the sneaking pose and is pretty adjustable. It can open its mouth and move its neck and its limbs. And I've also got this white and brown Atrociraptor, just like the super colossal one that you see over there. And it is pretty poseable as well. It's even got those orange red eyes. These Velociraptor figures both have an extreme battle damage on the side that you can open and close. Check that out. And this one is Velociraptor Blue with the extreme battle damage. Looks like I've got a few more Velociraptor Blue figures in here. It is the most popular Velociraptor after all. This one is this spring-loaded version, so you can launch it into the air as if it's jumping. And this one is the normal version of Velociraptor Blue. Check out another vintage Jurassic Park Velociraptor. This is JP-10, so it might be a little bit more recent than the JP-06 one that we saw earlier. And it has totally different coloring too. It's got the orange and the red on top. And we've got another handful of Velociraptors in here, all with different colors. This first one, I believe, is my most recent one. It is part of the Jurassic World Dominion series. It has some really cool coloring along the top. I've also got this really cool bright red and purple striped Velociraptor, as well as a normal brown Velociraptor with reflective green eyes, and this blue Velociraptor with bright yellow along the top. And over here, I've got another small Atrociraptor figure with the bright orange coloring and the tan striping all over its body. And let's not forget these super colossal Velociraptor figures I had in the back here the whole time. This one is black with brown striping. And it's got a really cool looking eye. And there is also super colossal Velociraptor blue with the blue stripe down the sides and the lighter underbelly and those same really cool eyes. And also this super colossal Atrociraptor that came out for Jurassic World Dominion. check out these super colossal figures. This is Velociraptor Blue in this super colossal form. It's got the iconic blue stripe and the classic raptor teeth. Right next to that is an Atrociraptor figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It's colored white and it has some brown striping on its body and some very similar teeth. And the last super colossal raptor is this new Endoraptor figure and it is one of my favorites for sure. Like Velociraptor Blue, it has a stripe down its side but it is a gold stripe and I really love how different its teeth are compared to the other raptors. Moving over to the T-Rex side. This is the super colossal T-Rex from Jurassic World Dominion. It has the brown colored body and totally different teeth compared to the raptors. Right next to that is a custom colored T-Rex that I've had for a really long time. It is a light blue gray color. It has some dark red eyes and some sharper teeth, I think, 
compared to the Dominion T-Rex. And finally, there is another custom colored T-Rex here. This one is the Fire T-Rex. It's got red, yellow, and black all over its body. Its eyes actually do not have any pupils. And overall, it's just a really cool looking dinosaur. And now let's check out these new sets that I got. This first one is the Jurassic World Legacy Collection Tyrannosaurus Ambush Pack. Here is the Jeep that comes in this set. It is a camo Jeep. It's got the barricaded windows. And at the top is Dr. Ian Malcolm. But even better than that is this new T-Rex with new painting. I don't have another T-Rex with this color design on it. Looks to be mostly a dark green color. It has some gray and yellow accenting on the top of its back. And of course, it has the button at the top of its head for chomping and roaring. Now let's check out the new Dino Trackers Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. And here it is, an entirely new T-Rex figure in my collection. Once again, this one has totally new coloring. It's got some brown striping with an almost yellow color along the top. And it has this headpiece that you can fit it onto its face. And now it's kind of like an eyepiece or something like that. And this figure actually has a new attack button on its back. Let's check it out. So it's like a sideways chomping action with sound effects. That's pretty cool. Now let's get these new T-Rex figures set up on the T-Rex side. And now let's move on to our next figures. So next we're gonna grab a raptor. Why don't we go with the largest one here? This is a Pyroraptor figure. And this one's pretty special because it actually is battery powered and you can actually play with it and it walks around and stuff. So let me turn on the power and let's see it. You can tap it on the head here and it'll respond to you or underneath the chin as well. That's a pretty cool and pretty unique figure. We're gonna set it over here on the raptor side. Now it's back to the T-Rexes. Let's check out this epic roaring T-Rex from Camp Cretaceous. This figure is a little bit larger than the other T-Rexes that I've shown so far. And it has an attack button on its tail for roaring and chomping and moving the head around. And let's get this T-Rex on the T-Rex side right there. Back to the Raptors, let's go with this awesome Endoraptor figure. As you can tell, this figure is way smaller than the super colossal Endoraptor figure, but I'm still a pretty big fan of it. It's got this cool blue reflective coloring over its entire body. So let's go ahead and set it up underneath the super colossal raptors. Next up for the T-Rexes, I've got the new 93 Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This figure was released as part of the 30th anniversary for Jurassic Park and looks very similar to the vintage one that they released all those years ago. It's even got the real feel skin texture too. Now let's set it up to face off against the raptors on the T-Rex side. Let's see, what raptor should we go with next? Why don't we go with this Velociraptor blue figure? This is another pretty unique Velociraptor figure. You can see that it's built quite a bit differently and it has these really cool movements. First, it has a snapping action with sound effects. You can move its tail around, you can move its legs and really make it look super lifelike. It's really cool. And so let's set this over on the raptor side, right underneath the super colossal Endoraptor. For the T-Rexes, I've got a classic brown T-Rex figure. This figure features a fully posable body and the button at the top of its head for snapping its jaw open and closed. And so let's set this over here, right underneath this Dominion super colossal figure. Next, let's grab this Mega Raptor figure. This figure was released for Jurassic World Dominion. It features some really cool red and dark blue coloring. It has a ton of cool spikes on its back and a chomping action. 
And let's set it up right over here, right in front of the little Indoraptor. Next, let's go with a huge Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This is the Stomp and Escape T-Rex. And I think this figure is a little bit larger than almost all of these other T-Rex figures. It has a much larger torso, and it actually has a button on its back used for a huge roaring and chomping action. All right, now let's see if we get this T-Rex lined up on the T-Rex side. Looks like he's standing a little closer to the raptors. For the raptors, let's grab this Amber Collection Velociraptor figure. These Amber Collection figures are really cool because of their unique coloring and because of how poseable they are. You can move practically every limb in this raptor as it would in real life. And now we're gonna set this right back here for the raptor side. And back for the T-Rexes, let's grab this fiery red T-Rex. This T-Rex also has the yellow, black, and red coloring, very similar to the super colossal figure right here, but it's a bit more reflective and shiny overall. And it features a fully poseable body and the button at the top of its head for chomping. And we're gonna set this one right next to the other fire T-Rex, right above it. Now let's grab this other Velociraptor blue figure. Looks like we have three Velociraptor blues in this collection so far. We first had the super colossal version, then we had this little one over here, and now here is, I believe, the smallest version in this collection. Now this figure is a basic version, so it's a bit cheaper than many of these other figures, but it doesn't have an attack button. You can only move its tail, its legs, and its arm. But overall, it's still pretty cool. And now let's set this in line over on the raptor side here. This next T-Rex here is another Legacy Collection T-Rex, I believe. So here is the older Legacy Collection, and here is the newer version that we just opened up at the beginning of the video. And this version too has some dark green coloring, although it just has some black striping on the top of its body, but it still has the button on its head for chomping and roaring. Now, why don't we go ahead and set it up right in front of the other Legacy Collection T-Rex. So we got the two green T-Rexes right next to each other. Here's another basic figure for the raptor side. This is a pyroraptor from Jurassic World Dominion. Now it's pretty similar in shape and size to the Velociraptor blue figure that we saw earlier from the basic series, but it has some pretty cool feather texturing on its arms, on its body, and on the top of its head too. So let's go ahead and set this up right next to the Velociraptor blue figure. Here is the Terran T-Rex figure. This one is a massive Tyrannosaurus Rex. It still has the classic brown coloring on its body, but it has two big action buttons on its back. The first operates the huge Terran action. Check that out. It twists its whole neck and chomps its jaw shut. And the second button swings the tail back and forth. Could probably knock out some raptors with that swing. All right, let's see if we've got more space for this Terran T-Rex. It's getting pretty cramped over here on the T-Rex side. This next raptor is a quite old Velociraptor figure from the first Jurassic World movie. This figure was actually made by Hasbro instead of Mattel, who made many of these newer figures over here. And you know, overall, it's a pretty basic figure. You can only move the legs and the arms a little bit, but sadly, there's no chomping or attack action. But nonetheless, we'll still set it up right over here on the raptor side. Here we've got a battle damage T-Rex figure. This T-Rex comes in the orange brown coloring and you can see that it has battle damage painted all over its body and even some on its face. Plus it has the button for chomping and roaring at the top of its head. Uh, let's see, oh boy, where are we gonna fit this T-Rex? And we can put him right up front, right here. For the Velociraptor side, we're gonna go with this basic Atrociraptor figure. This figure is much like the other basic figures that we saw in that you can move its tail, its legs, and its arms, but it doesn't have any actions. But it's still a pretty cool piece. I love the bright red eyes, and it has similar painting to the super colossal Atrociraptor that I've got right up there. And we'll go ahead and put this Atrociraptor right next to the other basic raptor figures. Now here is another super old Jurassic World figure, I believe from the first movie movie once again. Which means that this figure I believe was made by Hasbro instead of Mattel and this whole T-Rex was actually custom colored as well. So let's put this little T-Rex right in here. I think we've got a little space back here. There we go. And here are all the final figures for this collection. So I'm just gonna bring them all over here in a pile. 
Let's first get this Amber Collection Velociraptor set up. It has some really cool teal coloring with spots all over. And just like all the other Amber Collection, is super poseable. And let's place it down right here at the edge of the line. Let's set up a few more raptors over here while we're at it. Here is a smaller gray and yellow Velociraptor. It's very small, so there's no action button, but it's still pretty poseable. And we're gonna place this right over here. Next is this red and green Velociraptor, and it has spring-loaded legs, so you can actually press down and send it flying into the air. And we'll set that one up right here. Now I've got two more Velociraptors right here. This one is the newer one. I believe it's part of the Dino Tracker series, and it actually does have an attack button for moving its head up and down. And we're gonna set this one back here. And then this Velociraptor is a more clay red or kind of a brown color, and it is a battle damage edition Atrociraptor. So you can see a button right there, and the battle damage on its side, you can click on and off. And we're gonna set this Raptor up right over here on the edge of the line. But let's not forget our last and smallest T-Rex of the collection. This is the Sound Surge T-Rex, and it has the classic brown coloring all over its body with some gray detailing on the top of its head. And of course, the sound effects that you can turn on with the button. And so finally, let's place this on the T-Rex side, right in front of the Velociraptors. And that is the full collection. Which side do you think would win in a battle? The Raptors or the T-Rexes? Let me know in the comments below. First off, we've got the Velociraptor blue figure from the Amber Collection. This figure is very movable and very poseable. You can see the iconic blue stripe down its side. You can open and close the jaw, move the neck all around. All in all, is a very poseable figure. Next up from the Amber Collection is Velociraptor Delta. This figure has some pretty cool detailing and coloring on its body. I love the teal green color and the light underbelly. It's really cool and is very poseable as well. Can move all the limbs in its body and it is extremely poseable. Over here, we've got a Jurassic Park figure. So this figure is really old. This is one of the classic Triceratops figure. You can see that it's got some battle damage, a huge chunk taken out of its side right there. And this Triceratops actually has an action that when you squeeze its stomach, it moves its head up and down. This is another Velociraptor from the Amber Collection. This one is Velociraptor Echo. It's got the brown and black coloring along the top with the lighter underbelly, and just like the other figures, is extremely poseable. And one thing I haven't pointed out yet is that the tail is actually a bendable rubber. There's like a piece of metal in there, so you can actually bend it and it'll stay in place. That's pretty cool. Here is a Triceratops figure. I think this one might be from Camp Cretaceous, but I can't remember. Let me know in the comments if you know where this Triceratops is from. But it's got the clay red body. It's like a little orangish almost. It's got the brown detailing along the top and the action button on its back for the roaring. Plus you can move all of its legs too. They can go back and forth a little bit. Here is a bright red and purple Velociraptor figure. This is the classic size for the Velociraptor figures. You can open and close the jaw, you can move the arms and the legs as well, but there's no action button on this one. This Velociraptor is an even brighter red and it has some bright green striping and detailing along the top. You can actually move the neck back and forth on this figure and up and down. And this figure is actually spring-loaded in the legs so that it can actually leap up into the air if you were to let it go, which is pretty cool. Up next are these two green Velociraptor figures. They look almost identical, but you can tell that the coloring on this one is a little bit darker. See those stripes? They're a little bit darker. But they both have a button on their back to activate the arm action. Here is one of the brightest dinosaurs in this bin. This is a hybrid Triceratops. As you can tell, it is a hybrid with a Stegosaurus. It's got those gold coloring right along the top there. It's got a little bit of battle damage on the side. 
And when you move the tail, it actually sticks its head forward as if it's stabbing something. Here's another Velociraptor blue figure, but this is in the classic smaller size. Of course, you can see the iconic stripes down the sides of the body, and it is pretty poseable. You can move the arms, the legs, and you can open and close the jaw too. Here is another dark gray Velociraptor, but instead of the blue stripe, we've got some yellow detailing along the top, along its tail, and on the top of its head as well. And this figure is fairly movable as well. You can move the arms and the legs, and of course, open and close the jaw. Here is another super old figure. This is a Jurassic Park Triceratops figure. It's got a dark green coloring along the sides with a darker green along the top. And this figure actually has an action button that when you move this leg, it moves its head up and down. I bet you saw this super colossal figure already too. This is the super colossal Velociraptor Blue. Check out that huge blue stripe down its body. It's got some huge claws on its hands. It's got the light underbelly, and of course, like all the super colossal figures, it has the stomach compartment so you can feed it smaller dinosaurs. Up next, this isn't a Triceratops, but I believe it is a Sinoceratops. So pretty closely related. Comes with some sound effects as you can hear. It's got some pretty cool coloring with the gray along its body. It's got some brighter yellow right on the front as well. And you can use the tail to control the head. Before we go any further, I've actually got some brand new figures that we're gonna open up right now. Let's start with this Jurassic World Dominion, Dr. Ian Malcolm and Velociraptor pack. So here is the Velociraptor from the pack. It's got a dark green color and some pretty cool detailing along the top. It's like brown and then some green detailing speckled in too. That's pretty cool. I don't have another Velociraptor that is colored like this. And here is the Dr. E.M. Malcolm figure nice. with an electric staff, as well as some grasshopper figures that I'm sure you recognize from the new Jurassic World Dominion movie. Next, we've got the Triceratops from the Hammond collection. I'm excited to check this one out. This Triceratops is a dark brown color. It has some pretty faint detailing along its body. You can see it's a bit lighter in some areas, but overall, it's kind of the same brown color everywhere. It's got a lighter underbelly, but my favorite part is the face and the frill too. That's where the most detail is. Look at these horns. They've looked like they've gone through a lot of wear and tear. I love those orange eyes. So yeah, the face is definitely my favorite part of this figure. And it is fairly movable as well. You can see that you can move the legs back and forth and up and down and all over. And there are two joints in the tail as well, which is a pretty cool detail. So all in all, it's okay. I would have liked to have seen better coloring along the body because it's pretty subtle and it kind of just looks like a brown triceratops all over but it's pretty different from the other Triceratops I have, so I'm still happy to have this in my collection. Next up, we've got Velociraptor Charlie from the Amber Collection. This figure has the bright green coloring with the darker stripes along the top and is just as poseable as all the other Velociraptor figures. Yay. We've got another hybrid Triceratops figure, and I think we've actually got another one with different coloring. These are both hybrid Triceratops, mixed with a stegosaurus. You can see battle damage on both of them. And on both these figures, when you move the tail, it swings its head forward as if it's stabbing, just like the bright blue one that we saw earlier. Here's another large Triceratops figure. This one actually has two action buttons. The first one activates the head to move up and down, and the second button swings the tail. It's got some pretty dark coloring as well. It's a dark green with some dark brown detailing along its top and on the front as well. This Velociraptor is a dark blue color. It's got some darker stripes on the top and it's actually got an action button, I believe, that activates the arms. There we go. And of course you can open and close the jaw and move the head too. Here is a little Triceratops figure. I think I've actually got two of these that are identical. Both of them have the extreme battle damage right there on the side that you can open and close, which is a pretty cool feature. And both of them are this light green color with the brown on the top too. Here's another bright Velociraptor figure. This one is a bright blue with darker striping along the top. And this one is actually spring-loaded. So like the other ones that we saw, 
If you bend the legs and then let it go, it'll actually jump up into the air. <laughs> Here's a dinosaur species that's a relative to the Triceratops. This is the Zuniceratops. It's got the two horns in the front and a big frill and then the green body with the darker detailing along the top. Next up, we've got a Velociraptor with a slashing action. This figure is spring loaded, so you can swing it side to side to swing those arms and claws around. That's a pretty cool feature. Here's another big dinosaur figure. This is also a relative to the Triceratops. This is an Acutoceratops, and it has two action buttons on its back. The first one activates the head for the roaring, and the second activates the tail. That's pretty cool. Plus, it's got some dark green coloring on its legs that fades into the blue, and then the red detailing on the top and on its face, too. Looks like we've got two more Velociraptor figures in here. This first one is another super bright Velociraptor with the orange and yellow, and it is also spring-loaded, so this one will jump up into the air as well. And this other Velociraptor is Velociraptor Blue with battle damage on the side that you can open and close. <laughs> And then finally, I've got these itty bitty little Triceratops figures from Jurassic World. They all look pretty identical, but with different coloring. This first one is a dark brown color. I've also got a gray one with lighter gray on the top. And finally, this bright green one with lighter green on the top. The first and largest raptor of this collection is this custom colored super colossal endoraptor. This used to be a velociraptor blue figure, but now it has the black with the gold stripe down its back for the endoraptor. For the next biggest figure is another super colossal. This is velociraptor blue. And as you can see, these two super colossal figures are actually identical, so this one originally used to be a Velociraptor Blue just like this. Moving on to our next biggest figure is this Dino Trackers Endoraptor. This is quite a new figure and it's got a really cool reflective blue color all over it. It's also got an action button on its back to activate its jaw. And you can move the arms to twist the neck back and forth too. Next up in size, let's see, I think it's actually another Endoraptor, but this is an older figure. This is the grab and growl version. And this figure is pretty hard to find nowadays, so it's actually pretty rare. And on this figure, you can use the tail to open and close the jaw, to swing the arms back and forth, and to move the entire torso. Check it out, they're pretty close in size. Next up, I'm gonna be opening a brand new one. This is the Primal Pal Velociraptor Blue figure. Let's open it up. So this figure has a shorter tail than a lot of the Velociraptor figures I have, and it actually has some pretty realistic movements. You can move it side to side, it's got some sound effects, and you can push it down for a chomp action too. And let's set that right next in line. Moving right along here, I think we've got our final Endoraptor of this collection. A lot of these Endoraptors are pretty big. This is the smallest one, and it doesn't have any action buttons, but all of its limbs are still extremely poseable. This next one is the basic Velociraptor blue figure. There's not too much that you can adjust with it, but it still has movable arms, legs, and a tail. This next one is another medium-sized basic Velociraptor figure, but it has totally different coloring. It's in a bright orange and brown coloring. Next, we've got our first Atrociraptor of this collection, and this figure I actually personally custom colored. This is another basic figure from Jurassic World, so it doesn't have that many action features, but I'm really happy with how the color turned out. <laughs> Check it out, here's another Atrociraptor figure. This is the basic edition, once again, from Jurassic World. So let's set this down right next to the custom colored one. And here is our first Pyroraptor of this collection. This is the basic edition, so you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail. And I think it might be a little bit smaller or actually the same size as the Atrociraptors. All right, here is the first and only Mega Raptor that I have in my entire collection. This is from the Jurassic World Dominion series. It's got some huge claws on its hand, and when you press down on its back, it has a chomping action. 
For the next in size, let's go with the Hammond Edition Velociraptor. These raptors are pretty cool because they are super articulate with their limbs and they have quite a bit more detail than the basic ones. And right over here is another Amber Collection Velociraptor. This one is Velociraptor Blue. Check out that blue stripe down its back. And here is the final Amber Collection Velociraptor that I have in this collection. This one is the bright green with stripes on it. And let's set that down right next in line. Next up here is a pretty old Jurassic World figure. This is one of the first Velociraptors that Jurassic World released for the first movie. And these figures have quite a hard time standing up, so let's see if we can get it to stand up in line as the next in size. All right, I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. Here is another Atrociraptor figure in the bright orange coloring, but this is actually a Rowdy Roars Atrociraptor. Let's turn on the power and let's see it come to life. All right, now we're getting down to the real small raptors. Let's open up this new Austroraptor from the Dino Tracker series. So I think this is the only Austroraptor that I have in my entire collection. And this one has a much narrower and longer snout than a lot of the Velociraptor figures I have in my collection, but it's still got some feathering on its elbows. Right over here, I've got a super bright Velociraptor figure. It's in a bright blue color, and this one is actually spring-loaded, so you can launch it up into the air. Here, let me show you how it leaps. You press down, and then you release. This next one is another spring-loaded Velociraptor, but this is in a brown and dark brown coloring. Let's check out that jumping action on this one, too. Next up, this Velociraptor figure has a slashing action. So when you push on its torso, it swings back and forth, and it's actually spring-loaded too, so it could be pretty fast. All right, let's set this down next in line. This next one is a darker colored Velociraptor, and it has a different feature. There's a button on its back that you can use for a slashing action. Next, we've got our final Atrociraptor figure of this collection, and this is a Battle Damage Edition. There is a button on its back that you can use to activate the battle damage on the side. And since we're out of space on the very end of the table, let's start a new line up front here. This next figure is a newer Velociraptor from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got a darker body with some bright detailing on the top. This next raptor is a really cool colored Velociraptor. Check out that green speckled detailing on the top of its body. And let's set that down right there. Here's a different looking Velociraptor blue figure. This might actually be Velociraptor beta because it does look quite a bit younger. Now this is an amazingly colored Velociraptor. Check out that reflective gold right on its head. And let's put that next in line. All right, only two left. This next one is another Pyroraptor figure, but this one is in a battle damage edition with a button on the top to open and close the battle damage. <laughs> and the final Raptor in this biggest to smallest collection is this Click Tracker Atrociraptor. So after you turn it on, you use the remote and it follows the sound. Let's check that out. Pretty cool, I like that it's motorized. Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.